And now we're getting ready for our next session. And we have Vinicius Gubiani Ferrer. Oh, sorry. Can you introduce, can you say your name? <laughs> Please. Sure, sure I will. That's okay. I have a slide just for introducing myself. Oh, that, uh, my that name is. That, that be, uh, you're, you're, you're from uh, Palo Alto? Not really. I am oh. from Brazil, actually. Oh, yeah. And are you calling in from Brazil today? Yes, I am right now. It's wow. 10 45. Is, is, is this the first EuroPython event you've been to? Or have Indeed you? It is. Okay. So yes. are you ready? Sorry. I am. Just, just let me share my slides. Yes. Uh, I think we should get going and I'll uh, let you share your screen and start with your talk. Yes. Can you see my slides? I can see okay. your slides. I will stop my video and you also appear in the channel, so everything's fine. Hold Great. on. Okay, should I start? That's okay. Yeah, please go ahead. Oh, great, thanks. Well, okay, let's do this. Guys, I'll be talking today about effective code reviews, the edge between hard skills and soft skills. For those who, don't know, who do not know me, this is my first, on, first EuroPython conference. I work at Asian Technologies, which is an edge platform to build and run low latency applications in real-time data analysis. I am a Python backend developer at Asian Technologies. I am slash was a cyclist, at least before the pandemic. I'm a TV and movie series lover, addicted to quality assurance, and an open source contributor. I contribute on a daily basis to the Python Portuguese documentation because here in Brazil, the, not everybody speaks English. So that was the best way I can find to help on a very frequent basis. And according to GitHub, I'm also a guy that invests a lot of time into code review. This graph is maybe a bit outdated. It's about a year, a year something ago. It might have changed a bit, maybe a bit more scaled than to commits nowadays. But uh, you can check it out how it is right now at my GitHub profile at the end of this presentation. So what this code review talk is all about? A uh, uh, resume version is uh, code reviews are a software quality assurance activity in which one or several people check a program mainly by viewing parts of the code and it's hearing during the present the uh, the coding itself or at the end and one of the authors uh, one of the people involved is not exactly the author that sounds simple right well not exactly because actually machines are predictable and human beings are not so i'm gonna tell a bit of a story once upon a time a developer goes to work, start his day, and he sees some really bad code, which is really, really hard to work on. It's ugly and place your favorite adjectives over here on how you like to call bad code. And that guy decides to be brutally honest about the author that wrote the code and sometimes tell to him directly or to the whole company expressing sometimes the coding skills of the author or the nasty work that has actually done. And if that happened every now and then with a higher frequency, eventually that developer is let go of the company and have to find a new job. Even thought that person is a great programmer, know the language and all the frameworks from A to Z, etc. That might be one scenario, Another possible scenario is that that person is really, really annoyed with the bad code that he see frequently, but decide to keep his opinion for himself. And that leads to frustration, anger management, and sometimes deep, obscure desires to hurt or mur even murder somebody else, usually the code author. I mean, look at this guy, he seems distressed He's smashing those sheets of paper really, really as hard as he can, but that's not actually going to make the code better. Believe it or not, I used to feel like this guy uh, before 
working with code reviews. I worked at, uh, with companies that didn't have code reviews. Developers just passed code, for, code forward, like uh, get it done with the task without too much uh, quality assurance on top of it. And uh, that uh, was really annoying. So the objective of this talk is to help you guys out with uh, lessons learned. So you don't end like this guy or the previous guy that is fired or you have to go to therapy because you are stressed from work. So code reviews, why do they exist? Mostly for these reasons, for transmitting knowledge. Lots of companies have what they call the bus factor, which is when a project only have a single core developer and that can be dangerous for the company because if that developer goes on vacation, uh, quit his job, or in the worst case, literally gets hit by the bus and dies, then the project sometimes die along with him. So to train the next generation of developers in the company, the, you have to pass knowledge on. And code review is awesome for that. To stimulate collaborations into the project, to ensure that your changes are on the right track, because every now and then you think you are done with a task, you ship it off for code review, and uh, turns out that you didn't understand the task very much, and you have to either do it over from scratch or redo it like 30, 50% of it. So that also helps from preventing you from having to do it over from scratch. To have good practice when coding and to ensure we have good quality on the final product. You can see that I scratched out code because in most companies, including Asium, code is not exactly the final outcome what the client is actually demanding. Code is more like a meaning to achieve something. It's a tool, let's call it that way. So laying out three golden rules for healthy code reviews. And by healthy, I actually mean you don't end up stressed like the guy banging his head against the wall or fired. A first rule is don't take any comment as a personal offense. I had a teacher which used it to say smooth with people and harsh with problem. There are a lot of people that with just one, two or a few comments already changed to a defensive position, which sometimes is not actually actually defensive, it's more like uh, an offensive position, like they are almost starting a fight with you, a literal true fight. And uh, my advice in these cases is you don't have to protect your code like if it was your own child. You are the author of the code, you have DNA in the code, let's call it, since you are the author, but in the end, you don't own the code. The owner of the code, it'll be either the community or the, com the organization or the company that is actually paying your salary to write it. So as soon as you realize that your code is not your child, then you'll be all right. You'll be more willing to accept advice and feedback. A second rule is listen to feedbacks because that sounds dumb, but uh, most people actually don't want to listen to other people. And uh, there's that popular saying, we have two ears and one mouth, therefore we should listen twice as much than we speak, right? In the end, uh, you realize that you, everybody works for the same company with the same goals or and objectives, or almost the same goals and objectives, depending on the team, and everybody's there to help each other out. But of course, since you will be participating in code reviews, you have to, you don't, you, know, you have to differ feedback from, I will screw you back. Because uh, if somebody was harsh with you, you're not supposed to pay them back into the same currency. So don't screw somebody else back because you think they were impolite with you. And a third golden rule is accept the fact that you might be wrong. Because after all, being part of being human is making mistakes. In the end, uh, after a while, you realize that teamwork is much better than being a lonely wolf, a bounty hunter, or have some numerous sources like to call it a rock star, a ninja, 
uh, rocket scientist developer, whatever they call it, I see it every, very often. Even if you truly are a rock star or a ninja, those people usually are right 90, 95% of the times. So there is still a small percent of times where they are actually wrong. So this is known as Chuck Nodder syndrome or I never fail. My advice for these people is be humble and uh, because that will create a better image of you for your team. You will need it when you don't know how to do something, a specific task. So regarding feedback, most of the feedback we give, it's, uh, to be honest, will not exactly be pleasant feedback. It will mostly be halting a delivery of a task or negative feedback. So every now and then, we have to say some nice words for good things that you find into pull requests. Okay, nobody is in fourth grade in kindergarten anymore, so they don't have to say uh, nice words all the time. But every now and then when you see something you really, really liked, use words such as good job, awesome. If you're into, if you're into gaming, you can also say stuff like flawless victory, KO, monster kill, any other uh, approval phrases. If you're not confident into the context of a pull request to approve or reject it, you can use acronyms such as looks good to me, in my honest opinion, that is a way you do it back at Azure. And since call reviews every now and then are sometimes nervous and tense moments, you can always light the mood using emojis, memes, laugh phrases, such as this one I brought from previous times. In this case, my buddy was being maybe uh, too much redundant since he had in a single line three, four times the word choice, choice, choices. And I decided to use this Mimi to explain to him he was maybe raining in the pool, which is unnecessary. There's already enough water in there. On this case, a buddy of mine was, God knows why, trying to check if uh, a variable somehow, some way changed its value. And I have no idea why he attempted to do that maybe just to get the test passing and he forgot that into the pull request. I just literally gave him an upside down smiley emoji saying, okay, what are you trying to do over here? And on this case, a colleague of mine just reminded that fixing tests is unavoidable since you are producing new code or changing some tests. If they break, you will have to deal with uh, fixing broken tests. That is a fact from the life of developers. Some people every now and then ask me how to check if a code is good or not. Uh, there's not a truly specific uh, metric for that. I usually consider two metrics, which is the amount of curse words that you either speak or think when you are reviewing a pull request. If you are cursing just a few, then it's probably good code. If you're cursing a lot, then it might not. That became very, very real, this image for me, about two, three months ago, when I was reviewing some JavaScript code. I deal mostly with backend, and Python has very nice uh, conventions for the language and frameworks. And uh, for me, I uh, don't work with JavaScript on a daily basis. It seems so much more permissive, allow it, like you can do pretty much anything you want. And I was looking to that, God know why. <laughs> it was, I was laughing and nervous at the same time. And uh, another good metric that every, every now and then we use is the amount of comments that is left onto the pull request. But uh, of course that depends maybe from the size of the request itself. So, we're talking about good feedback and uh, negative feedback. When you are rejecting a pull request, always explain why you are doing so, because the author or the authors might think that you are not actually being reasonable or fair with them. So reasons for rejecting. If you believe that uh, the issue is not achieving what the pull request is not achieving what the issue is asking to, or you believe that pull request will break something, 
either because of the code that is present or because some code that is missing on the request. That is one of the biggest reasons for rejecting. Uh, and besides always explain, you have to watch out on how you will explain for the authors. So here are a few tips. Always, always be nice and try to show some empathy with the author, since he probably put a lot of work into it. You should try to put yourself into the author's shoes. Use collective words such as us, can we, all, instead of the individuals, I, you, him, her. Individual ter terms sound you are like blaming the author, which is not the case, you're just commenting. But if you use uh, us, can we, collective, that creates a sense of synergy and that is trying to, you're trying to help him. And uh, you notice soon that everybody is on the same boat. If it's going to take a while to explain, since you always have to try to be clear and straight to the point, you might as well tap on the other's shoulders if, and ask him if you have five minutes to spare for a quick chat. Of course, that might be a bit hard during the pandemic right now, but uh, you can do it using Skype, Slack, or whatever instant messengers you guys are using on your company. And uh, you can always raise questions instead of giving the direct answer for the author. What if you do it this way? It looks more efficient because X, Y, and Z. When you raise questions, you lead the author to thinking about it. When then it, uh, he might arrive to conclusions that he didn't thought it before. When you are on the other side, being a developer of the pull request, you have to keep an eye on these things. Isn't a pull request getting maybe a bit too big? Nah, a bit too big. Is it possible to break it down into smaller chunks, which are easier and faster to review? A good size for a pull request is usually 250, 300 lines of code without counting uh, style changes such as black, pep8, and isort. After that size, the pull request starts to become maybe a bit of a Godzilla or Megazord. It becomes tiring to hear it, to, to review it. So that sounds an interesting metric. People ask me, can I open it as a whip, a work in progress? You can, you definitely can. Because if you're not sure, what exactly are you doing? Because let's be honest, how many times we are sure what we're doing in life? I'm not exactly what I'm doing right now, to be honest. But uh, you can open it as a whip, just mark it as a whip. And uh, preferably open it as soon as you pass 50% of the changes, or 60%. Because if you just... Uh, submit your pull request when it's, you believe it's done you might be totally off tracks and you might have to uh, get it over from scratch that happened with a, me and a buddy of mine a couple of times about uh, maybe four years ago something like that but uh, every now and then that happens always place the style changes such as black pepe tie sort into separate commits why? Because those can be automated using uh, pre-commit and other tools. So it's not worth uh, wasting time into discussions like this. You can automate it and you should preferably skip that into code review. Prior to opening, did you pass the test on your machine? Uh, that'll be nice if you do it locally because sometimes for some companies, uh, you might have a CYQ, so you are actually fighting with people for CPU resources. So you, if you can pass the test locally, that'll be great because you are doing a favor to other people. Is the pull request clear? What about the description or images that show off what uh, was changed? So it's very, very likely that uh, some of the reviewers will not be from your team, so they not might be up to date with the context on what's going on, what's this change for. So you have to describe it as clear as possible, like if somebody that joined the company today understand what's going on in this pull request. Is this a new fix or a fit? Where are the tests? The, some people will demand that on your pull request. I know I do, because every fit and fix should have tests 
to either ensure that uh, you are achieving the requirements that were desired for that specific task or that a bug that uh, became into enter the code shall never return again at least hopefully and finally uh, you should review your own request prior to opening as much careful as you can or as i like to call it personally consider the next programmer a psycho who knows exactly where you live because the same way as you don't want to work with crappy code like the previous guys that i presented the one that get fired or keep his opinion to himself you should always release code that you are proud to work on at least for yourself and if you have uh, happens to find code that uh, it's not that good improve it even if it's just one line at a time because your buddies will thank you for that so uh, when opening your pull request always keep an eye on pdbs comments that are not uh, necessary unsuccessful rebases or merges that kind of stuff will save a lot of time into back and forth discussions uh pipeline cpu time so review your own pull request please what should you keep an eye on if the test or the pipeline is actually failing don't waste your time with that because it's probably that uh, some code will enter to fix the, the test or the pipeline so you might end up wasting time if you are starting to review something that's not passing. If you see any typos, such as comments, tests, variables, name, classes, you can and should comment on that. About two months ago, a buddy of mine said he didn't understood my pull request. I went to check it out. I misspelled not. I actually meant to write now. And after changing that single letter, he totally got it, the meaning of what uh, I was trying to achieve. So Asium is a Brazilian company, uh, but our code base is all written in English. So every now and then, uh, Portuguese words slips through the code. So we have to comment on pull requests to keep it on a regular basis, all everybody in the same page. Uh, logic errors that uh, you should comment, but of course you have to be sure that uh, there is a logic error into that. It might backfire if you're not sure. Uh, suggestion for this is raise it as a question. Maybe I didn't do, understood it correct. Is this okay? Like you're not uh, affirming that is wrong. You are raising the doubt. And performance optimizations. They are a tough manner to discuss well the meat but uh, if you can optimize small things they might uh, turn out to be very very beneficial for example uh, there is one specific place that you might have to hit the database and that line runs like ten thousand times in a single hour so if you prevent that from happening you're already uh, preserving cpu resources from the database Again, some other stuff that you might keep an eye on. Follow style conventions and project architectural guidelines, good practices adopted for the by the company and the community. Uh, create documents inside the company. Asium has several of those, including for code reviews, which this talk was originally based on. The commit message and pull request titles. Preferably, uh, I suggest a specific pattern, which is a Jira or bug track issue number, followed by a prefix such as fix, fit, docs, char, and a small message, all of this uh, fitting to 60 or 50 characters. If you can't explain under 50 or 60 characters, there is a good metric to knowing that your pull request was too much big and you should have broken it before. It's a, a way of learning um you might stumble to situations where the author doesn't give up so my advice for that is is to negotiate so you hear a lot of stuff so the spring is too long already way behind and uh, that kind of stuff and finally don't use force push use force if least which makes the reviewer's job much easier to sum it up guys code review comes down mostly to people than actually technology. You have to find a way to express yourself 
uh, without anybody getting harmed into the process, without uh, hurting anybody's feelings. And uh, in the end, it's hard because dealing with people is actually harder than dealing with machines. I guess you guys uh, will agree with me. Well, thanks a lot for the opportunity for speaking at Europython 2020. Like we'd say at Asium, move to the edge. Valeu, merci, thank you, muchas gracias, vielen Dank, konnichiwa. And I don't speak Russian or Chinese. If you guys please pronounce this for me. If you have any questions at all, please contact me on Discord or any of these means over here. I would love to get to see your feedback. Thank you, guys. Do thank have... you very much. Oops, thank you. Do we have any uh, questions? We have... I... Yes, we I have some... time for some short question. Let's see. Can you hear me? Sure, I can. OK, Easy. perfect. The first question uh, from Thomas. How do you balance time effort and depth of code review? How uh, we can avoid scratching only the surface of the code? Mm, that is a good question. Um, I guess we have a, a rule at Asium, which uh, the code needs to be approved by two persons. You can always place that. Uh, we do have persons that just approve blindly. I believe that you should. Uh, that is more like a personal feeling, I guess. Uh, the company don't uh, force specific time, but uh, I do admit that I uh, invest a lot of time into code review, but I already prevented several bugs from going to production. I'm, I'm really proud of that. Okay, thank you. And one more question. Do you recommend any particular tool for code reviews? For example, a web application, pull request discussions on GitHub or uh, Atlassian Crucible? Sure. We use uh, GitHub itself uh, for the pull requests of GitHub. We also use GitLab. We have uh, about half of our repositories into each one of those. Uh, I know some people use Garrett. I think that's the pronunciation. Uh, there are lots of tools. I've been looking to automation tools. I'm not sure if somebody will ask that. I like them for finding out security issues and uh, maybe, maybe some other stuff, but they will not produce uh, human readable code. That's my feeling about it. Okay, uh, final question uh, from Thomas. Uh, can you recommend how to discuss a pull request with the owner of a repository who are acting sometimes like <laughs> benevolent dictators for life? <laughs> yes, uh, let's see recommendations for that case. Um, that depends a lot. I'm not sure if you're talking about specific open source code or a company code. If you, great, I see you updated the question. Uh, if you are in the company, uh, I recommend always be polite. Uh, he'll probably fight you back. That is very common. But uh, if you truly think that uh, something might break if that code follows along, you should maybe involve uh, your manager or even his manager or both the managers, like the tech leads, because that might happen. I've seen stuff that I, I noticed on the pull request. He went ahead anyway and exploded in production just as I told him. I was just, I, I stayed quiet, like took an, uh, taking a coffee uh, afar, just looking at and looking at my watch, that kind of stuff. Okay, thank you very much for the questions and for the talk. And we can continue this in the Discord talk channel. But uh, at the moment, everybody at home, please give some applause together with this pre recording. <laughs> <laughs>